Diggity and Harlequin. So uh, we are going to jump into the replay. So a few gentlemen will hit play. So uh, we are at the three second mark. So nothing exciting happened here. You can't cheese in three seconds. But uh, yeah, Diggity. So um, I, since you saw a bit of a trajectory of the match, I guess you can sort of spoil it for everyone and uh, explain the, the intricacies of the match as you saw them. So, well, I guess we'll see it as it arrives. But essentially what you're going to see Chompy do is go spawning pool before gas. And really the trick for Zerg when they're going gas first is to create some sort of follow-up threat to the Protoss opponent. Because really, if you don't grab that gas, the Protoss can just sit there and build Zealots and apply pressure. Because Zealots, pound for pound, do pretty well against Zerglings, particularly if you have some Chrono Boost to back it up uh, and get a lot of them out. Um, so really, when Chompy doesn't take that gas, that's a big indication that he's going for a fast expansion. I don't think Vekwith actually even scouted inside the base. To see that, he actually got a, a manor pylon off mm-hmm. at the natural expansion to deny a lot of that. Um, but it, nevertheless, he decided to go Stalker first and didn't upgrade Blink. Um, perhaps he thought he had upgraded Blink. I think that might have been what happened, is he thought he had upgraded Blink, and he was just going to use some Blink Micro against kind of a a ground Zergling force. Started moving out uh, towards the 12 o'clock base and just really had a bad unit composition and didn't have, um, was in a bad position as well and didn't really have the tools at his his exposure, or at his exposure, his uh, disposal to really, to be effective. And it looks like, okay, this probe is wandering in, it is seeing the spawning pool after gas, uh, or sorry, before gas, and no gas placed yet. So this should, and also you see that little drone moving back and forth. So this is really the, the stage where I would think, in Vekwith's mind, he should start thinking, okay, I'm going to start pumping some zealots to be more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a bit of a distance on this map, but it's not as bad as other maps, and I still feel like, yeah, um, when you see no gas early, you can think about producing a couple more zealots, or maybe zealot stalker early. Um, but basically what you know your Zerg opponent's doing is he's going to play more economical. And I'll pass it off because I've been rambling for a good two minutes now. And this is yeah, no, I agree. Stuff. And I was I was actually very surprised at the time I was going to criticize because as we'll see very shortly, uh, Chompy so desperately wants, not desperately, but so badly wants to uh, get an expansion that he goes all the way over and takes the northern expansion, which for me, I, I was going to say at the time that, you know, I've seen a bunch of Mad Frog replays and he's an old school, you know, Warcraft 3 player I'm a big fan of, but he has this habit of always taking these sort of secret satellite expansions and they're just so hard to manage because you have to either risk transferring a whole bunch of workers across the map and instantly give it away or it just comes online so slowly because you have to grow all the uh, all the drones right there on site and get a queen out there and it's just a real risk. So I was actually surprised to see that he didn't just make a couple of lings and take down that pylon, but that instead he just went across the map. So it was very odd to, to see that kind of strategy. Any thoughts here? Yeah, so um, I was actually going to note that I... I it's strange, because when we dropped, I actually thought Vekwith was in a position to take the map, because he actually had a really nice uh, pylon placement at the back door, and he had it in a position so that he could just directly warp in and reinforce to that uh, natural, which I, not, not natural, but expansion, but I presume had finished. So I'm actually surprised that he lost. I'm not, I, I'm interested to see what he could have done to possibly lose that. But I do think um, he might have uh, overcommitted a little bit on the warp gates. Um, I think once he saw that expansion, he knew, okay, the Zerg is sort of down on minerals. He, he invested in this expansion. I only really need a few zealots to go kill that off because it's just so hard to reinforce at a position like that. Um, Another thing that I thought was quite a huge blunder on Chompy's part was expanding there before taking that watchtower because it's sort of like it, it, it's just logical to take that watchtower no matter what. But particularly if you're going to expand at a hidden location like that, you don't want your opponent to be able to see it simply by virtue of doing what they would normally do in a match. So uh, I thought um, I actually thought Vekwith was in a great position. So I'm interested to see what happened, uh, how things sort of disintegrated from there. And that's exactly where I left. So, uh, <laughs> so right here. I've- I feel like Vekwist is in great position. He's got three warp gates. It really, uh, I guess I should have noticed, is he does have two gas. He's not mining out of one of them, which, again, led me to believe, okay, um, probably going to be seeing a lower tech, at least infantry attack. But instead, yeah, like you were saying with the reinforcement point, he starts warping in stalkers to the low, the, the low ground, which is okay. But you, the thing is, is Chompy, again, he has no gas. Um, and in particularly taking the 12 o'clock location, all he can produce is Zerglings at this stage. That is it. That's all he can really produce. So going in with stalkers, particularly at this angle, you're just kind of you're you're asking for it a little bit here. So now he's starting to march forward, and particularly with speed, which I believe Chompy has. So catches it here at really good at uh, really good time, but right here immediately surrounded. Um, and actually, I don't even think he has speed. 
and you can see where stalkers without blink particularly pinned against that little wall not in the best position uh, to engage so really a smaller and again imagine eight zealots against that force at the same engagement point comparatively or even a larger force of zealots and right now Vekwith has no map control he's invested very heavily with the warp gates he's not in a position to expand anytime soon he is getting a robotics facility but uh, in the meantime losing the destructible rocks in the back corner so it's he, he has to produce a bunch of units again which is just letting Chompy get further and further economically ahead so Chompy definitely has a lock on the match um, after that engagement at this stage just because you can continue producing there there's Beck was saying just not making good decisions uh, right there and he's gonna GG out very very early yeah so once again congratulations to uh, Chompy but um yeah that that was just he he really showed that he knows how to handle a protest and just handle himself in general I've been really impressed with his play throughout the tournament and I actually have a special treat for you guys potentially we actually uh, in lieu of the um, finals, we can have a show match between Avoid and Red Alert, if that's something people are interested in. Oh, hell yeah. 